This video is about multiple linear regression, and it will talk about the option in the framework of multiple linear regression to fit unique intercepts and unique slopes to a particular data set. I'm going to remind us that in the framework of multiple linear regression, we have many options on how to fit models to our data, and you should, in general, pick one of those options, whether it's you want one line, or you want unique intercept, or unique slopes, or, as we'll talk about in this video, one model with both unique intercepts and unique slopes. You should pick one of these options and present that as your analysis. You should not present all four options. We're going to continue our example about hospitals infection risk in R, and in the name of short videos, I am going to build off of code we've looked at before um, so that we don't have to go through it all over again. Read in the data set, load the libraries ggplot2 and dplyr, make a base plot from which we're going to understand that we want to predict infection risk using two explanatory variables, one of them numeric and one of them categorical. And what we're going to learn in this video is essentially just the symbol we need here to say that we want both unique intercepts and unique slopes for a model that predicts unique intercepts and unique slopes. So I'm going to name my model appropriate, and I'm going to use the character asterisk, that is shift 8. And by using an asterisk to relate region to stay, I will get one unique slope for each level of region and one unique intercept for each level of region. But if we run that code, really not much happens. It just fits the model in the background for us. In order to look at how that model is fit, let's create a new column in our data frame named hospital that makes predictions using the function named predict on the model we just fit. That will add a new column to our data frame such that we can then use that new column to make lines across the plot you see here. And what you will see is that indeed there are four unique lines on this plot one for each region, where they all have their own slopes across stay and their own unique intercepts. In this video, I'm going to focus on interpreting some of these coefficients when using confidence intervals. In previous videos, we looked at interpreting these coefficients in terms of predictions or and in terms of hypothesis tests. But in this video, I'm going to focus on confidence intervals. And you're going to have to spend some time kind of putting all the different pieces available about interpretations of your models together yourself. So let's write out our model. We're going to have an intercept. And notice, because region 1 explicitly not attached to stay, because anything attached to our numerical explanatory variable is some kind of slope. So without a numerical explanatory variable attached to it, these are going to be intercepts and offsets. And because region 1 is hidden, which is frustrating, but that's the way it works in R, we can trust that the intercept is appropriate for region 1. 1 shows up before 2, 3, and 4, so R chose region 1 as the base group, the reference group. So we got 1.47 as the intercept for infection risk for region 1. We've got negative 2.98 as the offset for region 2, plus negative 4.31 as the offset of the intercept for region 3 relative to region 1, plus 2.80 times an indicator variable for region 4. So this is the 
offset for region 4 relative to the intercept for the reference group region 1. I'm going to put the rest of these, uh, the rest of our model on a new line here. So then we've got 0 0.31. Times stay. But look, stay has a slope for region two. There's a slope on stay for region three. There's a slope on stay for region four. So suddenly these are all offsets for stay in region one. So it's like slopes, just like intercepts, can function as a reference group from which there are offsets. That'll make more sense to us once we write out the model, I think. So there's no um, indicator variable attached to this line in our model, which suggests this is the slope for region one across stay. So then we're just going to keep working our way down. 0 0.30 times stay times an indicator variable for region 2 plus 0 0.44 times stay times an indicator variable for region 3. Plus, oh, so close to making it all fit, zero, negative 0 0.29 times stay times an indicator variable for region 4. So with this full model here, if we wanted to make a prediction for level three, when stay equals, let's do something different, 12, we would have 1.47 because that is the reference group for region one. There's no indicator variables attached to it. We don't need this term because we're making a prediction for level three. Thus, the indicator variable for region 2 goes to 0. We do need this next term. Let's do it like this. It doesn't actually matter, though. 4.31 as the offset for region 3's intercept uh, relative to region 1. Plus, notice we're still making a prediction for region 3, so this term should go to 0 since it's appropriate for region 4. This term has no indicator variables on it, so we need to include it times 12, because we'll set stay equals to 12, plus uh, we're not predicting for region 2, so we don't need that term. We are predicting for region 3, so we go 0 0.44 times 12. And we don't need this last term because we're predicting for region three, not region four. So look what this line, okay, that is our code and it'll work. But look what really happens if we group 1.47 together and minus 4.31 plus, now look, both of these terms have a 12 in it. So we can go 0 0.31 plus 0 0.44 and take that 12 out. And now look, if we are really trying to understand what's going on here, this 12 is really the variable for stay. So what we've got is a prediction for level three when stay is equal to 12, but really we have an intercept appropriate for region three, and we have a slope appropriate for region three across the numerical explanatory variable. So look, it still is a line. There's an intercept and a slope, but it's the line appropriate for region three. And we've built it by including the intercept for region one plus the offset appropriate for region three. The slope for region one plus the slope offset appropriate for region three. And those two things together, if we rearrange the model, is really saying when you've stayed in a hospital in region three for 12 days, we expect your infection risk to be 6.16. Oof, that's one of the highest we've seen yet. So try your best not to get in region three and stay for 12 days. You're going to have a relatively higher than most other regions 
a high infection risk. So in this video, we spent most of our time understanding how we can write out mathematically the model that we've created when using unique intercepts and unique slopes. And I think the trick to understanding this really comes down to these indicator variables. Because once you have the indicator variables there, you can see how you can build all of these co coefficients into your model. And once you have a prediction for a particular level at a particular value, I think it's much easier to see that you have a slope and an intercept for a particular level and at a particular value of your numerical explanatory variable. And we got to that through this understanding of indicator variables.